Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial covering five things that new Procreate users should know about brushes. Before we start, I'm assuming that you know a few things about brushes already, such as how to select a brush by tapping on the brush tool and then selecting the category and the brush to use. I'm assuming that you know that you can resize a brush using the slider over on the left here and change its opacity using the opacity slider. I'm assuming that you understand that Streamline will smooth your brush line. Here in the Stroke panel, I get access to the Streamline feature. Turning Streamline on will smooth the brush. Turning Streamline off will give it lots of jagged edges. I'm also assuming that you know that brushes that are shipped with Procreate don't have that little tilled character beside their name and that those brushes that do have the tilled character are either brushes that you've created yourself or downloaded and installed into Procreate, but they're not original Procreate brushes. Finally, I'm assuming that you know how to remove taper from a brush. I'm going to do that here to the Studio Pen and I'm going to find taper in a couple of places. In the stroke area, there will be pressure taper and that's the taper that's applied with the Apple Pen. Touch taper is the taper that's applied when you use your finger to draw. And in the pencil area, reducing the size back to zero will remove any residual taper from the brush. Erase with the current brush. The current brush that I'm using in Procreate here is the Studio Pen and the eraser itself is using the dry ink brush. I'm going to draw a circle with my Studio Pen and I'll fill it with the current colour. Now if I go to use the eraser, it's going to use the dry brush to erase on that shape. However, if I reselect the regular brush and just draw a little bit with it so that we're working with that particular brush, and if I want to erase using the brush that I'm currently using to paint with, I'll press and hold on the eraser, and this flips the eraser over to using the current brush. So now it's going to erase with that streamline brush and not with the dry ink brush. Keep a folder of original and downloaded brushes. One of the issues in Procreate is that while you can reset a brush that is shipped with Procreate, you can't reset a brush that you've created yourself or one that you have imported. So if you download brushes, make changes to them and want to go back to the way the brushes used to look, then that's going to be difficult unless you keep a copy of that brush somewhere handy. And that goes the same for any brushes that you've created yourself. So what I suggest you do is go into the brush library here and tap on the plus symbol and create a folder for originals. And then you place a copy of important brushes in that folder. For example, brushes that you created yourself or those that you've downloaded. So I have a monoline brush here. I'm going to make a duplicate of it by dragging over it and clicking duplicate. Then I'll drag and drop it into the originals folder. I'll just hover over the library name until the panel on the right opens up. And then I'll drop my brush into that panel. This will ensure that a copy of that brush is always safe. I would use the one from the monoline collection, but make sure that I keep the one in the originals in case I damage the brush that I've been working with. Making a brush larger. While you already know how to resize a brush using the slider here on the left of the screen, you may encounter an issue where you can't make a brush any larger, but you want it to be larger. So let's go into the brushes panel, let's tap on this brush. In the general area, you can make changes to the brush to make it larger. So we're looking here at the size limits area. If I increase the maximum allowed size for the brush, then it's going to be able to be much bigger. So this is the maximum size for this particular brush. If I still need it to be larger, I can come back into general and make it larger still. Use Copy Canvas to create your own brush. I have an image of a flower here that I want to make a brush from. So I'll go to the Spanner icon to the Add menu and tap Copy Canvas to make a copy of the image onto the clipboard. To make a brush, I'll tap the brush symbol and I'm going to make it in my Shapes collection. I'll tap the plus symbol. 
and in the shape source area I'm just going to press and hold until the word paste appears and then tap paste. That pastes the image of the canvas that we made as the shape source. For this brush I'll choose a grain from the Pro Library so I'll tap on Swap from Pro Library and I'll scroll down to find blank. That's a black box on my screen, it might be a white box on your screen if you're using the darker interface. I'll tap back on Source because I need to invert this shape. The shape at the moment is on a white background, it should be the other way around so I'll tap Invert Shape. I'll go to the Stroke panel and here in the spacing I'm going to increase the spacing so that I'm going to paint a row of flowers. I'll turn off the layers that have the brush elements on them. I'll turn on my empty layer that I have sitting there and let's see how the brush paints. Make a duplicate of a brush to speed up creating a new brush. In the previous tip we created a flower brush. I want to create this arrow as a new brush. I'll go and copy the canvas as I did previously. In the brushes panel I already have a flower brush that has most of the settings that I need for this arrow brush. So I'll drag across it and make a duplicate of it. And then I'll tap on the duplicate I just made. I'll go into source and I'll press and hold on the shape source. I'll tap paste. And all I need to do now is to go and work with my new brush because it's inherited the exact same settings as the flower brush. If I need to make specific changes to this brush I can do so. In this case I'm going to the shape area and I'm going to set the rotation to follow the stroke. Then I'll go to the general area and I'm going to turn off orient to screen. Now my new brush will follow my drawn line but it's been much easier to set up because it shared most of the characteristics of the flower brush and only required minor alteration. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Procreate brush techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.